into Africa and by providing international trade services for African countries and through our four young entrepreneurs across Africa. We train entrepreneurs to trade and connect, learn and engage across how you as an individual can contribute to our socio-economic development. Young men and women from Uganda are on the program. We have 187 men and women. We are happy to break down the barriers and young people face in order to empower in real estate, in hospitality, and healthcare. Yes, societies are just and sustainable. Yes, my economic philosophy of African capitalism, the African Development Bank, the ICRC, and the German Mark Carbon. Legislative, institutional, happens in Kenya. A country renowned for its economic president, to conclude my short remarks. More recently, since 2016, micro, small, and medium, from 68,000 to 80. <laughs> it will 100 million. ACP countries, any enterprise created must be a means to solve. The meeting tomorrow, the launch of an ACP success becomes a reality. The theme that has been picked for this summit is industrialization. This of the African, Caribbean, and Pacific on the table. I need to have our issues discussed. And I travel frequently. Time and time again, I see and help drive infrastructure development domestically. In working with the Tony Mello Foundation to leverage resources from. Thank you so much. That is Meki Kenya. Here in Kenya, Mr. President, and as said by the essay that I do, which is central to how our economies grow sustainably, we have our young people increasingly and encourage them to do more. In Kenya, Your Excellency, of the ninth summit of the African Caribbean Pacific group of states and international markets. Finally, in terms of systemic impact in Kenya, the intra AC programs have contributed during the past. In the key objective of this evening's dialogue and the presidential panel include developing actionable proposals to promote industrial transformation, including in the blue as well as green economies, and also to agree on strategies for accelerating intra-ACP trade and investment. I believe that we all expect a rich set of proposals to emerge out of these discussions. And in that regard, and ahead of these discussions, let me just mention a few areas that I believe we should give priority. First, the recognition that our people are the most valuable resource that we have. The ACP group of countries has within themselves one billion people, most of whom are under 35 years of age. They are vibrant and increasingly much better educated, given the right skills training and opportunities, this large reservoir of young people will become the engine that drives the transformation that we, speak, we seek as a group and individually also as countries. Towards this end, Kenya has focused itself on achieving universal access to free primary education and we are now in our second year of implementing 100% transition from primary to secondary school. In addition, Kenya has also invested heavily in preparing our people for the opportunities afforded by the digital economy through various skills development initiatives, including our digital learning program, which is aimed at integrating the use of digital technologies 
in the learning of all our public primary schools. I think the second point we need to consider is the need to promote industrialization of agriculture, stronger linkages between farmers and agro-industry can improve supply chain efficiencies and improve access to local and global markets and increase the real incomes of our farmers. In addition, because agriculture employs more than half of our workers, many of them poor, value addition and the integration of smallholder farmers into national and regional agricultural value chains would contribute to much more inclusive growth and development. The third aspect is that we need to support entrepreneurship and the growth of micro, small and medium enterprises. In Kenya, as I believe in many of the ACP countries, MSMEs contribute about one-third of gross domestic output and create about 80% of all employment. MSMEs have the potential to create positive impacts on the welfare of vulnerable groups such as youth, women, and persons living with disabilities. To successfully grow micro, small, and medium enterprises, members of vulnerable and economically disadvantaged groups, we need to ensure that we provide finance, business skills training, and markets, without which most of them, as evidenced, will fall within the first three years. I am sure that all of us look forward to receiving a report on feasible solutions especially on innovative financing for accelerating youth, women, and persons living with disability into the entrepreneurship class. Going forward, ladies and gentlemen, we need to diversify our products and identify key service sectors which have a, which have a fast growing trade potential. This would include creative and cultural industries, as we were discussing with my sister Mia yesterday, also known as the orange economy, which generate today approximately 2.25 trillion US dollars in revenue and 29.5 million jobs globally, according to the first global mapping of this particular sector. So ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I would wish to invite all of you to explore the many investment opportunities that exist in different sectors, not only of Kenya's economy, but of each other's economy. All these ranging from housing, health, manufacturing, agriculture, infrastructure, ICT, fintech, and I'm sure that later you will also hear quite a bit especially about Kenya's revolutionary money transfer product, which we refer to as M-Pesa, and other fintech products that are available here in Kenya. Kenya will also be very keen to engage with leading captains of industry amongst you, with a view of learning the secrets of your own individual successes in your respective countries. ACP countries, I believe, have much to learn from each other, both in terms of our individual successes as well as the common challenges that we all face. The fourth aspect is the need for us to continually improve the regulatory and institutional frameworks, as indeed was mentioned by Tony a little earlier. We need to design effective business laws and regulations that promote the interests of SMEs, SMEs and provide them with an opportunity to innovate and grow into large enterprises. As governments, we need to continuously improve the ease of doing business, 
in order to remove supply side constraints and increase competitiveness, transparency, and efficiency. By working close to the private sector, we in Kenya have improved our ranking in the World Bank ease of doing business from number 136 in the year 2014 to number 56 as of last year. The fifth aspect I think we should also focus ourselves on is how to set up frameworks, instruments, and institutions to facilitate innovation and technology transfer as well as absorption. We have a huge opportunity to fundamentally transform into industrialized and job-rich economies through the use of technology. Fundamentally, transform our countries for the better. While most of our countries lack the financial resources to address the current large development deficit, particularly in infrastructure, our young people are tech savvy and indeed have a huge entrepreneurial spirit. And they are ready to embrace a digital revolution. Indeed, our experience in Kenya shows clearly that a flourishing digital and innovation ecosystem can stimulate the growth of ICT-related businesses and technological innovations and nurture vibrant tech startups and incubation hubs, as Tony himself has mentioned with those young men and women that he has supported through his fund and foundation. Further, technology can also promote financial inclusion, promote the growth of e-commerce, and improve the efficiency and transparency of service delivery by governments. By leveraging on digital financial services, access to financial services in Kenya, as a result, has tripled from 26% in 2006 to well over 85% in 2019. About 39% of our private enterprises in Kenya are engaged in e-commerce, and 70% of all e-commerce payments in Kenya are settled through various mobile money payment platforms. The final issue I'd like to draw to your attention and highlight is that private sector-led industrial development is critical to bringing about the structural transformation that is needed to set developing economies on a path of sustained economic development. The private sector in Kenya, as in the case in many of our ACP countries, contributes the bulk of the gross domestic output, as well as employment, with a particularly critical role played by micro, small, and medium enterprises. In recognition of this critical role, the government of Kenya has established a formal and structured engagement with the private sector through which strategies to promote private sector-led growth are developed and implemented in conjunction with each other. I note that the ACP private sector development strategy emphasizes the prioritization of an enabling environment for the development of public and private sector enterprises. This, I believe, is a sound proposal because public-private partnerships can be the foundation for sustainable solutions to the challenges facing ACP economies. Such partnerships can make ACP member states economically more competitive and increase our combined contribution to global trade. 